I hope this could be the one. I hope they did it. What if one dock could replace every single port filled brick on my desk and come up with a secret prize? <laughs> Get it? It's a dock. Anchor sent me this mystery box. Oh my gosh. Okay, we'll, we'll get back to that. <laughs> oh my. I'm really excited for this because I've been waiting for this one. Anchor Prime TB5 Thunderbolt 5 dock for Thunderbolt 5 slash 4 laptops. This is a 14 in one 8K Thunderbolt 5 dock, 140 watts max fast charging, up to 8K high resolution displays that can be plugged into it, up to 120 gigabyte per second max burst data transfer rate as per Thunderbolt 5 specs. And let's pop this baby open. Now, if you watched this channel for the last few months, you might have seen a couple of videos here where I test a few Thunderbolt 5 devices, but none of them have these kinds of specs of this brand new dock. And I'm pretty loyal to my docks. So to knock off my favorite dock will be quite a feat. But if anybody can do it, it's definitely this one. And I'll tell you why. Oh, uh, the mystery box. We'll take a look at that later. Don't worry. We got the dock here. Wait a minute, am I missing something? Hold up, hold, hold on. No way. It comes with a power cable, but the power supply is internal. All I gotta do is just plug in this power cable. But... And apparently the way Anchor is able to accomplish this is by adding GAN material right inside the dock. Since they've been creating GAN charges for a little while now, they know how to shrink it down and make it small enough to fit in here so that the adapter can actually be built in. I love the simplicity. You just get this and you get a Thunderbolt 5 cable. Cause that's all you should have to need. I have a box. <laughs> Trying to keep a little bit organized here, but this is what you would normally get with a dock, a giant, power brick. This is not even a joke when you're traveling. Even with this tiny dock that used to be my favorite travel dock, you have to carry this around, which is bigger than the dock. You get the idea. So to have an internal power supply, <laughs> that is already a winner. Now Anchor did send me the dock, the mystery box and sponsored this video. But let me tell you, when I saw the specs of this thing, I was already blown away. Let's get into that. First of all, you got your computer connection, two Thunderbolt downstream connections, both Thunderbolt 5. Thunderbolt 5, by the way, is 80 gigabyte per second speed, which is two times faster than Thunderbolt 4. And it goes up to 120 in burst mode in a single direction. That's useful for if you're running an 8K monitor, for example. You have both DisplayPort and HDMI here, both 2.1. Two 10 gig USB-A ports, still very useful. I use those all the time. On the front, headphone jack, another 10 gig port, and two 10 gig USB-C ports. 45 watt total, so you can charge devices from this thing too. Oh, <laughs> I forgot, we have a little TF card here, micro SD, and a regular size SD card. I really enjoy having that because, well, I use that all the time, uploading videos and things. I like the beveled edge touch, especially for that micro SD card. You don't see that for some reason, I don't know why, but that's a nice little touch. Rubber feet keep it nice and stable. Look at that, it's gonna stay on my desk. Now it does have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet here. I'm wired for 2.5 gigabit ethernet, so I'm okay with that. If you do need 10, this does not have that unfortunately, but you could get an adapter and go through one of these Thunderbolt ports with 10 gigabit if you need that. Okay, I'm really interested in this. Let's check this out. Okay, here we go. Power, it glows, and Thunderbolt 5, right? into the upstream port, AKA the computer port. I had a couple of docks that I've tested lately that have had some warming up issues. This one comes with a built-in fan, so that should not be a problem. I'll check out the temperature as I use it, but let's plug a few things in. Let's go with a couple of monitors first. It looks pretty good. Those aren't crazy monitors or anything. They're just two 4K displays that I've been using for many years. Hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? There we go. Now I did decide to use the Thunderbolt to display port adapters, which means that now I can not use those downstream Thunderbolt ports. A smarter thing would be to use display port to display port or HDMI to HDMI for one of the monitors. I brought in another monitor here. This is the Apple Studio display. And I'm gonna plug this thing into the Thunderbolt dock here. And it does not turn on. Let me unplug one of these other ones. Okay, so the dock will only 
work with two monitors. Kind of wish it did three, but that is actually a limitation from Apple themselves, not something that Anchor could help. Apple only allows up to two displays per Thunderbolt connection. So if you wanted to use three displays, you could, if you have another cable going to the computer direct, that would be something like this setup. Display one, display two, display three. And that would free me up to use the Thunderbolt connection for anything else that I please. But I needed to do that test to make sure that that works as I expect it to, and it does. Now I'm using display port to display port, which means I can now connect another Thunderbolt device to this. And I'm gonna use this handy old Thunderbolt 4 drive. Don't worry, I'll do a Thunderbolt 5 test shortly too. But for now I wanna do Thunderbolt 4 and see how fast we can read and write. Let's do a quick black magic disk speed test. And we're getting pretty decent speeds, even though this is just Thunderbolt 4. Um, 3,500 megabytes per second, write, 2,800, read. Now I wrote a little script so that we can get the performance of the drive over time. This is more like testing the disk speed of the drive itself and the interface, the Thunderbolt 4 interface. But I still wanna know, compare it to the Thunderbolt 5. So let's run that. Sudo disk copy logger. Target directory will be the external volume. Okay, <laughs> there it is. Test file size. Now I'm gonna go with 50 here because I found that after a certain time period, reading and writing, things degrade a little bit. And we'll get to see that hopefully. Just so the cache is not involved here, this is creating a brand new file, a binary file that's gonna be completely random. This whole time I'm doing this, uh, this doc is cool. <laughs> It's not heating up yet. I have two monitors going. I have the external drive hooked up to it. I'm also gonna run 2.5 gig ethernet so we can try that out too. And I'm getting pretty much what I expected here for my up and down because I am limited to one gigabit up and down through my ISP, internet service provider. Now to test 2.5 gigs, I need another computer. All right, both of these machines are plugged in. I'm gonna use iPerf3. Client machine is gonna talk to the server over here and that's 232 is the IP address. And we're getting 2.35 gigabit per second, so it's pretty good. I'd say that's two and a half gigabit is so much faster than one, it's ridiculous. Five is even fast, 10 is even faster. I'm being Mr. Obvious here, but once you try it, you just, you can't go back to one gigabit you can't do it so 2.5 is welcomed here let's take a look at how our disk copy did and we'll plot it <laughs> yeah i don't think so let's go with 100 gigabytes here all right this is 100 gigabytes it's writing and it looks like it's around two gigabytes per second this drive is warming up a bit while this is happening we can take a look at the dock we're up to 43 degrees right where the exhaust fan is but everywhere else it's pretty decently cool so that means that the fan is working perfectly fine sucking all that heat out of there and i can't hear it which is great you don't want to hear it here's the drive we're at 38 degrees on the drive itself it's not bad it's doing the read test right now and it's reading at about 3,000 megabytes per second yeah, something is definitely off with that uh, write speed <laughs> chart. Definitely. Not sure why it's over-reporting that number, but uh, the read speed looks pretty decent and it's looking like pretty steady. One more test. I'm gonna do amorphous disk mark just because I wanna get those random read and write speeds with a 16 gig payload and let's go. Here are the final numbers for the Thunderbolt 4 enclosure. Pretty good, even the random reads and writes. Now let's check out Thunderbolt 5. I've never done a dedicated review of this little drive right here, but I've been using it nonstop. I have a bunch of models on there, LLMs, and <laughs> it's been a lifesaver. Let's plug that thing in disk speed test about 3700 megabytes right and about 5000 read not too bad let's go with 50 gigabytes for my script this time around i hope i have enough space on there even though i got a ton of these models like deep seek r1 is on there four bit three bit version llama 70 billion a bunch of those <laughs> 
Hey, I'm a collector now. While it's running, as an aside, I've been using local LLMs a lot. I even have LM Studio permanently running in server mode and it dynamically loads models for me based on the script that I'm running. Pretty useful stuff. And since I'm not using one of the APIs that you have to pay for, this is all free. Now you can see the write speeds are actually quite a bit faster now. We're over a thousand megabytes per second faster on the right. There's the read speed right there. You can see it changing around about 5,000 megabytes per second. Let's take a look at the plot here. Our read speed is uh, quite a bit faster uh, than 5,000 at peaks. We're looking only at the peaks here, 5,100, 5,400, and 5,700. Here are the writes, about 3,900, 3,800, 3,600, 3,900, and down from there when it winds down. Let's do amorphous. By the way, we are not limited in either one of these cases by the speed of the SSD itself. The M.2 that's in here is the Samsung 990 Pro, which is rated much higher than the speeds we're reaching anyway. The only thing we're limited by is the Thunderbolt interface. Okay, here we go. Here are the results. Looking pretty good, except for the random write. That's kind of odd. Here's the previous run with the Thunderbolt 4 drive. Random read and write were both faster. But the sequential is much, much faster on Thunderbolt 5. The random might be limited by the drive itself. Uh, I don't know actually why that is. If you know, leave a comment down below. I'm sure people would appreciate that. Now this whole time I've had this plugged in, the M4 Max MacBook Pro that I have here has not been plugged in through MagSafe. It's only getting power from the dock. It's at 100%, so it's not gonna really show any power being used, but let's take a look. I'm gonna unplug this. Plug in my little measuring device, and it's still showing that it's drawing some power, about 30 watts. No, no, it's going down, kind of bouncing around right now. This is not showing the full 140 that this dock is capable of, obviously, because my Mac doesn't need that right now. Let's plug in this MacBook Air, which is not fully charged. Let's see what that takes. And this is drawing about 67 watts right now. I think it might be the maximum that the MacBook Air can do. Now, just out of curiosity, I also want to see how fast we can transfer just a normal large file without any kind of benchmarks or tests. Just being a regular guy, doing regular things, transferring LLMs that are huge, you know. I offload a bunch of my LLMs on an external drive because there's just no room. So here's Llama 3.3, 70 billion parameter model, and I'm going to transfer it over here and let's go. I've just started the transfer. How long is it going to take? Oh, just 10 seconds, 82 gigabytes. Hey, hey, that's not bad at all. And there we go. Why do I sound like my grandpa? I don't know. That's not bad at all. <laughs> all right, I'll forgive you if you unsubscribe right now. But if you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. More lame jokes coming up next video. This is why I love Thunderbolt 5. Does everybody need it? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody needs it, but if you're planning to copy large amounts of data like I do, lots of video files, lots of large language models, this thing saves so much time. It's unbelievable. I'm just kind of blown away by how this fan is working. I can hear it if I put my ear right to it, but it's pretty quiet. I've been standing it up, which is not the correct way to have it here. I've had it like this just so that we can see the ports, but I will have it on my desk standing like this on its rubber feet, where it draws the air from the bottom and then blows it out of the fans. So this is the Anchor Prime Thunderbolt 5 dock and it's on sale now. Looks like this and when you buy it, you get a chance to win this, this giant mystery box. I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to open it and show you all because that kind of defeats the mystery. But since I have it here and they sent it to me, I figured they want me to show it. <laughs> <laughs> I have not looked inside of it myself yet. Just a peek. Comes with all this stuff inside. A prime charger, 100 watts, power expand USB-C to gigabit ethernet adapter. Oh, well, I'm gonna need my special knife for this. Okay, what is this? Anchor Prime multi-device fast charging. This is their brand new charger, 67 watts. It's tiny and this can charge a MacBook Air plus two other devices all at the same time. I already have the older one here that I've been using, but this one doesn't have three outputs. It only has one. What else we got? I'm getting to use my favorite knife a lot today. 240 watt cable, three feet. Very nice. Oh, I've been wanting something like this. This attaches to the back of my iPhone with MagSafe and it's a TF and SD card reader. Nice, big box. Oh, this one's heavy. Well, it's heavy because it needs to be so it doesn't drop your stuff. 
It's a little dark for an iPad or a computer. I don't know, I guess both. This one also connects to your iPad, HDMI output, power delivery, SD card, a micro SD card, two USB ports and a headphone jack. Nice, call it a tablet stand. I've never even had one of those. <laughs> Layer two, wow. It's a mystery box inside a mystery box. Oh, it's a USB-C to HDMI adapter. I can always use one of these. Magnetic cable holder. Oh, yes. I've been wanting to pick this up actually. Get my desk organized. I don't think there's any hope for me. It just looks nice from the top, folks. You don't want to see what's underneath. Anchor HDMI switch. I didn't even know they made that. Ho ho. I have a couple of these that I'm using already. Another one is not gonna hurt. It's gonna be my backup. Anchor USB-C hub. I love these things. These are portable and you can basically, it's really light and you can just take these anywhere. Really easy USB-C and HDMI expansion along with power delivery and USB-A ports. Very handy. I think that's it. <laughs> nice. Grab the Anchor Prime Thunderbolt 5 dock right now. It's on sale. I'll leave a link in the description and you can register to win one of these. Thanks to Anchor for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching the video. And I'll see you all next time.